And there he is, Raiders tight end Darren Waller, first-time Pro Bowler. Darren, thank you so much for being with this morning. Good to have you. And I also want to mention the Chiefs, I, excuse me, the Raiders, the last team to beat the Chiefs. And I just want to give you some love for a second because I was looking up some stats on you. Um, 107 passes this season, breaking Tim Brown's record in 1997. How about that? And in the last two seasons, you only trail Travis Kelsey amongst tight ends in receptions and receiving yards. So you have been balling, sir and I just want to make sure everyone at home is aware of that beyond Raiders Nation. But uh, first, let me start with this. Major story of the day, Deshaun Watson demanding a trade. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I feel like Deshaun Watson, at this point, all he's done for Houston, that franchise, I feel like he has the right to express how he truly feels. Um, he's invested so much into that organization that uh, he's earned the right to have that voice, and they should listen to him. And... I feel like it's okay for him to express how he feels. And if he wants to go somewhere else with his career, then uh, I, I'm all for that. We see this kind of stuff happening, Darren, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much. But we see this kind of stuff happening primarily in the sport of the National Basketball Association. It's rare that we've seen something like this happen in the National Football League. As a player in the National Football League, what enters your mind when you hear a player, particularly of his caliber, take this kind of staunch position. How does it resonate with y'all? Not necessarily about him, but about the team he plays for and how players in the National Football League are getting treated by some organizations. What are your thoughts? Um, when you see something like that, you just know that there's a divide there. Uh, the best organizations uh, in the league, there's, uh, there's a camaraderie, there's a togetherness, there's the front office, the coaches, and the players on the same page. When you see a guy like Deshaun, uh, you know, take that stance, you know that there's a divide. Like, he's a champion. We know that. We know his pedigree. Um, and there's something there in that organization that isn't sitting right with him. Uh, with all that he's put in, he feels like there's no change that's going to be there. And that's a tough place to be as a player because you can do all that you can and control what you can control. But when it's not being met on the other side, uh, it's very frustrating. Meantime, Deshaun Watson, I've been saying, is probably the second most trade value in the NFL, given his age and his ability and everything, behind Patrick Mahomes, who's a guy who's gone 25-1, and one, or who's on a team that just went 25-1 and one in their last 26 games. There was one team that beat them. I don't know if you know who it is off the top of your head, um, but I suspect that you do. What is the key to beating the Kansas City Chiefs? Um, you got to be firing on all cylinders for sure. Uh, when we beat them, we had uh, explosive pass plays, a few that were over 50 yards, um, explosive runs that were over 50 yards. Uh, the defense had multiple turnovers, so it's, it's got to be every part of the game that's contributing. It can't just be one part because they're such a good team at this point in the season. Their defense is always playing their best at this time. Uh, you know what their offense brings to the table is just, you know, it's a freak show over there. So, you know, you got to be on top of every aspect of the game. One small slip in any small area uh, can be that what breaks the game open for them. So I would say, you know, ex explosive plays on offense and um, turn the ball over and getting sacks on defense. What the hell happened to y'all, man? Y'all were six and four. Y'all looked like y'all were en route to go into the playoffs. And then y'all ended up two and four over your last six games. Finished as a 500 team. What what happened? What happened to the Las Vegas Raiders? Um, when you look back over the last two years, like a similar trend happened. So I would probably say that, that goes into the attention to detail as we go down through the season. Um, got the small things are what separate those games that we lose, and uh, you can you can go by and cruise by off energy and you know enthusiasm and things like that early in the season. But when it gets tough in the later half and it gets cold and you know the road gets tougher. Um, you know, we got to be on top of the details and come to work with uh, that same level of energy, even an increased energy uh, to be a championship team and be considered in those playoff games. So, you know, things like that got to change. We got to step up our uh, ball security on offense, can't be turning the ball over um, or, you know, falling short in the red zone. These are things that we have to fix uh, in order to get where we want to go. You've played both teams in the Super Bowl this year. Um, so you face both defenses. Which defense is more of a problem, the Bucks or the Chiefs? Um, I'll probably have to go with the Bucks. Um, you look at the the front. Uh, you got Shaq Barrett, who led the league in sacks 
in 2019. You got Pierre Paul, who I think was the toughest person I had to pass protect against this year and is playing some of the best of his career. Uh, you got those lineback- the linebacker duo in there, which is the best I've probably ever played against at any level. Uh, and their DBs can make plays as well, like Murphy Bunting, um, you know, Carlton Davis, uh, Whitehead flying around back there. So they've got talent on every single level and guys that can make uh, impact plays. Uh, but I'm not going to sell the Kansas City defense short either, uh, not with Tyron Matthew out there, uh, Frank Clark, you know, guys like that. They're, they get better as the season goes along, better than anyone I've seen in the past couple of years. Um, what's it like to play for Chucky? That's what we uh, people affectionately call him. He's the great John Gruden. We miss him. He is the voice of Monday Night Football. He did an outstanding job for us for many years, even though Lewis Riddick and the crew are doing a great job now. Wanted to know your thoughts because when we think about the Raiders, you think about John Gruden. Chucky, as they call him from time to time, from that doll that always looked like his face was messed up, all of that stuff. But anyway, Chucky, what's it like playing for him? Uh, it's amazing playing for Coach Gruden. Uh, he's got an infectious energy about him, and it's always positive, uh, you know, speaking uh, greatness into people. Like when I first got to the team, you know, I was just, you know, a guy trying to keep a job because I was always in trouble and things like that. But he was speaking greatness into me, and that kind of planted seeds for me to, you know, take off with my career. And it's always things like that. He'll get, he'll get after you if the effort and things like that aren't there. But uh, he's a guy that loves everyone that's a part of the team, a part of the building, a part of the franchise, and. He just makes it fun to come in and come to meetings and come to practice every day. Darren, huge congrats on an incredible season by you personally. And let me ask you this, because I'm going to be asking folks this quite a bit over the next week, but you're the first person I get to. I'm super excited for the Super Bowl. As we mentioned, you played both teams. Who's winning it? Is it Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, or is it Tom Brady and the Bucks? I'm going with the Bucks. Um, and I think if the Bucks win, I feel like there's going to be a, a defensive Super Bowl MVP. Mm. Interesting. I All didn't right. expect I to hear it. you, you say, say that. The Bucks I mean, have the better defense. You, you, you do know that you got to face the Kansas City Chiefs twice next year, right? You, 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 un- you know that, right? You just picked against yeah. them. You know? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> they might remember that. You know that, right? It's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Darren, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate He's you. He's got to play safe. their defense, Stephen A. <laughs> mm-hmm. If he was a defender, maybe it would be a little different. <laughs> yes. I feel you. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Darren. Take care. Uh, we'll keep it moving here, guys. Thanks, uh, this year's Super Bowl game features a matchup between uh, two most clutch quarterbacks in the game. Patrick Mahomes erased a 10-point fourth-quarter deficit to lead the Chiefs to victory in last year's Super Bowl, while Tom Brady has several come-from-behind wins in the big game, most notably a 28-3 deficit with Atlanta. Max, I'll start with you. Who do you trust more with the game on the line? The big fella, Damian Woody, is back. Who's more clutch, Brady or Mahomes? Patrick Mahomes. It, if the question is football, the answer is Patrick Mahomes. I trust him more with the game on the line, the game not on the line, in the first quarter, in the fourth quarter. I trust him the most because he's the best. And, and I'll say that I've seen Mahomes and Brady link up. When Brady had all the experience in the world, had already five Super Bowl championships, and Mahomes was in his first season as a starter, I saw what happened at the end of that game. Tom Brady threw an interception to end the game. A pre-snap penalty gave him the ball back. Understand, Mahomes never got to touch the ball. I saw saw Brady throw the interception. The game should have been over. I also saw Mahomes not touch the ball. It's my belief to this day that had Mahomes gotten the ball, he'd be working on his third consecutive Super Bowl win. By the way, I am done. I'm finished with the business of predicting Tom Brady's demise. That's not what this is about. (laughs) He's been outstanding at his age or any age. But Mahomes is playing the quarterback position, I believe, at the highest level it's ever been played. A couple of things. Number one, John, uh, Tom Brady was not outstanding in the second half last week when he threw three interceptions. Let's remember that. Even though we applaud him and we think he's great and it's phenomenal that he's in this position, the second half was not that great. Having said all of that, it's not that definitive to me when it comes to uh, Mahomes over Brady because Brady is the six-time champion. He is the guy that went to nine Super Bowls. One of the Super Bowls he lost, he lost throwing for 505 yards against the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm not going to sleep on it. Just <laughs> one game in the clutch moment. Tom Brady, as far as I'm concerned, if you're good enough to be in a clutch moment in a particular game, then why shouldn't I bet on Tom Brady once that clutch moment arrives? 
You know, to me, he's somebody that you got to take out, put up, you know, put him behind the eight ball, have him playing catch up. But if it's a nip and tuck and he's balling and it's a close, a close clutch situation, I can't summarily dismiss that. And as it pertains to Patrick Mahomes, Max, I want to say one other thing before we move on here. Um, Patrick Mahomes is phenomenal. Deshaun Watson, it's nice to hear you acknowledge again that he's phenomenal as well. But you're quick to say he's not Patrick Mahomes. Brandon Cooks, Will Fuller, as opposed to Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. Not the let same, me huh? see. Let me see Deshaun Watson with Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey and then tell me he's not Patrick Mahomes. Until then, I'm not so sure. But to get back to Brady and, 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 and Mahomes, just a clutch situation. Not long, a season long, or anything. Just one clutch situation. Of, for example, a Super Bowl's on the line. Last five minutes, it's nip and tuck. I'm going to bet against Brady? I don't think so. Boy, y'all put me in a position. Yeah, you know. <laughs> y'all put me in a position. An untenable position. I've seen, I've seen 12 do it. Six times. Six times I've seen 12 do it. That's crazy. But I also know that Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes is the best football player in the National Football League. Patrick Mahomes can do things off platform, can, can do things when things break down as good as any player or probably better in the National Football League. And so... For that reason, that reason alone, I'm going to give Patrick Mahomes the edge because I think Tom Brady is a little bit more reliable, reliant, excuse me, on the, all the pieces around him. When things happen, if the Chiefs bring the blitz and have more rushes than you have blockers, can, Don, can Tom Brady weasel his way out of it, make things happen like a Patrick Mahomes can? I mean, those are the little things that we're talking about here. And so for me, I want to give a slight edge to the to the young the young Ferrari and, and Patrick Mahomes. Mm. Mm. Wow, the former Patriot, the two time Super Bowl champ. Okay, Damian Woody, I see now, you going uh, with see, the what, Chiefs. See, what, what, see, what, I'm glad you're an unbiased analyst. You're an unbiased analyst, and I'm we're proud not of you do right Molly. there. Oh, what? What, what are, are we not going to do? Say that I'm biased. Are you trying to say that I'm biased, I know biased, I said you're Molly? unbiased. I said that was an unbiased pick. I'm very proud of you. Even though you've got two Super Bowls, <laughs> a lot of that thanks to Tom Brady, you still went with the Chiefs because you think Patrick Mahomes is the better quarterback. And guess what, Damian Woody? I think you are wrong. Good for but you, But let's Damian. keep it moving here. We have plenty of times for <laughs> Super Bowl picks. Let me get this breaking news story in one more time, fellas. Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson has requested a trade. This comes out publicly on the same day that they hired a new head coach. And apparently it has nothing to do with the hiring of the head coach. It was in the works for plenty of weeks before. Um, Stephen A., I'll start with you here on this. The fact that he wants to be out. We've heard other players are unhappy with the organization. Any last words here on this subject? Um... Everyone's hesitant to say so because you want to make sure that you have definitive facts before you point out, point, point things out. I totally respect where the Adam Schefter and others are coming from. They're doing the right thing. What I would say, however, is that I watched a quarterback sign a multi-million dollar deal, uh, or, you know, a nine-figure deal, and was crying and appreciative of the organization. In 18 months, and, and a one season later, he wants out, won't return their phone calls, has nothing to do with them. That's not about a 4-12 and record. That's about something more than that. Whether it's being lied to or the treatment of him, that says that's what that says to me. And when Adam Schefter, highlight, Adam Schefter highlights that numerous players feel this way, he didn't go to the demographics of it all, and I totally understand that. But Deshaun Watson, to feel the way that he feels, um, and to come across as so offended by the organization, um, the manner in which they've been treated, I think we're going to find out a lot of things. And I think the fact that they hired a 65-year-old black coach who had never been a coordinator offensive or defensive, 
and he's your head coach. And then that morning, that following morning is when all of this comes out in an official capacity about Deshaun Watson. That's telling me something about the Texans organization and black players. And all I'll say about it is that I'd love to find out more. I do not know, but something smells. My nostrils, I feel, I, I can sense the stench right now. Something smells, something ain't right. And I want to find out what that is. And I promise you, I'm not going to rest until I do. Well, as you might say, Stephen A., let me put it more directly. Something stinks. And, and, and look, this is, this is what it looks like right now. Let me just tell you what it looks like from where I'm sitting. Stephen A., you reported earlier that it was not Deshaun Watson who leaked the information that he'd actually requested a trade weeks ago, but now it's public. So what does that look like? The team hires a black head coach. Look, everybody, there's no, no issue here, nothing to see here. You know, please disperse, right? Okay, the coach is 65 years old. That means he's not in their long-term plans. Don't be slick, guys. <laughs> like, everyone sees what that is. He's 65 years old. I feel very good for him. He made it to the top of the NFL. That's awesome. He got a head coaching job, and it's a black head coach. That's important. But he's 65. That ain't a 10-year plan. As you said earlier, Stephen, it might not even be a five-year plan. And Deshaun Watson didn't come out and say anything. They now outed Deshaun Watson and his trade request, which means it seems like they're trying to frame it. Look at Deshaun Watson. What's the problem? What does he want from us? Look, we have a black head coach, and that's what it looks like from where I'm sitting. Damian, finally, I'll say we're about to witness the biggest trade in NFL history. There's never, ever been a commodity like this in the NFL, a superstar quarterback in his prime, 25 years old, who's been traded. It's going to be a first. I agree with you. I think you're exactly right. My question, And my question is, where did it all go wrong for the Houston Texans? Where did it all go wrong for the Houston Texans to the point where you had a superstar quarterback signed up to a long-term extension, a top five quarterback entering in his prime, and now he's demanding a trade. I'm going to repeat again what I said earlier in the show. You had J.J. Watt apologizing for the season that the team had around Deshaun Watson. Andre Johnson, one of the most celebrated players in that Houston Texans organization, basically trashing the organization, telling Deshaun Watson to get the hell out. Well, how in the world did the Houston Texans get to this point? That's got to be, I mean, that's, I, I want to know. Because we're only hearing 10% of what's probably what's really happening within that organization. I want to know. Bill O'Brien has some of those answers, former head coach. He's got some of those answers, especially since he had so much power after they got rid of GM Rick Smith. He's got some answers. Traded DeAndre Hopkins. I'm for sure a bag more of, of these details chips. will continue to leak 